got your Bibles, Matthew 27, 1 through 5, and we're going to walk through a little bit. Um, and uh, anybody want to be free? Is there anybody in here that just wants to be, be free? We come to church week in and week out and week in, and sometimes we go home and we're still in just as much bondage as we were when we got here. And it's not because the word isn't good. It's because we haven't figured out how to apply the word. But is there anybody that truly wants to be free? Amen. So the Bible says, and I may be, may be a little different from you. I'm reading from the NIV, and then I have some in the New King James Version, but Matthew 27, 1 through 5. And it talks, we're talk, here to talk about Judas, which I think is real, real funny that uh, we're talking about Judas as we talk about forgiveness. But it says, 27 and 1 says, early in the morning, all the chief priests and the elders of the people made their plans how to have Jesus executed. So they bound him led him away, and handed him over to Pilate, the governor. When Judas, who had betrayed him, saw that Jesus was condemned, he was seized with remorse and returned the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priests and the elders. said, I have sinned, he said, for I have betrayed innocent blood. What is that to us, they replied. That's your responsibility. Five says, so Judas threw the money into the temple and left. Then he went away and hanged himself. If you've got your Bibles, flip over to um, Philippians 3, 13 and 14. You can put a placeholder because we'll spend most of the time uh, in the book of Matthew. But Philippians 3, 13 says, Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead, I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Jesus Christ. Um, our theme and title for the whole month has been uh, forgiveness for what you can't forget. Today we'll, we'll, we'll have a title or subtitle that says forgiven for what I can't forget. Look at somebody and say forgiven for what I can't forget. And see, the thing is, it's so funny when Pastor Campbell asked me to speak. It's, it's such a hard message. It was um, when he asked, I almost started laughing. He said, you, you know, Isaiah, I need you to close out our series on forgiveness. And I was like, damn, Pastor, I'm good at a lot of stuff. You want to talk about faith? I got you. You want to talk about entrepreneurship? I got you. You want to talk about being a father? I feel like I got those areas. But you want me to talk about forgiveness? And I was kind of like... There's some areas I really don't know. So I, this, this message was, was difficult. It was difficult for me. And this whole month has been difficult in some cases because I've almost sat around and waited for somebody to speak the message that I know God told me to speak so that I wouldn't have to speak it. I sat around and I was almost like, and then I got, I get the opportunity to go behind Pastor Campbell, who's, you know, the, the people's pastor. Everybody loves Pastor Campbell. He's amazing. He's led the community for years. And then Good Morning America, Kobe comes up here. And now I got to, now I got to come behind her. And, 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 and I'm just like, Lord, I don't know what, I don't know what you're doing, but, uh, could I have gone first so I can at least get my topic out? Because the whole month you've been listening to forgiveness and forgiveness, and you got to forgive, and it's hard. And I'm like, God, what else do you want me to say? He, they said it. What's left about forgiveness? And the thing that I began to think about was the fact that although we taught about forgiveness and the thing we're supposed to give away forgiveness and we understand that forgiveness is difficult and, and keeps us trapped in prison and, and, you know, giving forgiveness allows us to be free. The problem that I have oftentimes isn't not giving forgiveness. It's actually walking in the forgiveness that God has given me. And so I began to study and I began to really, really look up. I, I began to search and then God changed my message a little bit because I started looking up forgiving myself. But the Bible doesn't speak directly about forgiving myself. The Bible talks about walking in the forgiveness that God has given us. He died for your sins. He's already given you the forgiveness. Now we have to begin to walk in the forgiveness. So I need you to look at somebody and say, I have forgiven and I am forgiving. So today, I need you to walk out of here free because I need you to walk in the forgiveness that you have been given by God. 
Many times we're in relationships, we're in friendships, we're in family, and your spouse or your friends have forgiven you for what you've done, just like Jesus has, but you begin to hold yourself in a prison because you cannot walk in the forgiveness that you have been given. Amen? And so we end up being so bound, and over the course of this month, we've been all encouraged to deal with the harsh realization that forgiveness is a choice, y'all, and it is a choice. And although it produces freedom, it is not easy. Forgiving is not, it is not easy. It's easy to say if you have an alt with your brother, you know, go to your brother and, and, and don't let the sun go down upon your wrath. But if you've been married or in a friendship or in a relationship longer than 15 minutes, it will put that right to a test. And you will be held and bound to anger and resentment and being cold because granting or giving forgiveness is difficult. And what it does is it keeps you in bondage and it keeps you in prisons. And the thing is, the, the issue is that forgiveness means to let go. But what happens when you can't walk in the forgiveness? So that's what we're going to talk about today. We're getting free today. Look at somebody say, I'm getting free today. Walking in forgiveness. And the reason I get you to say stuff is not because I need a filler in my message. It's because I need you to get it in your spirit. I need you to hear yourself say, I am forgiven. I was raised in a time where we talked about how Jesus died on the cross, but nobody walked in forgiveness. Everybody was just scared to go to hell. So you said, God, you know, he says, if you confess your sins, he's faithful and just forgive them. And, you know, whatever I need to do to stay out of there. But the problem is we never end up with a relationship or walking in right relationship with our friends or our family or our spouse or even with God because we never learn how to walk in the forgiveness. Amen. So the thing is, what happens when you can't accept the forgiveness that Jesus died for. Kobe stood up here and talked about the transfer of debt and how if AMX assumes the debt that you had with Capital One is still a debt, but the, the person just doesn't have it anymore. You have a debt, but it's been transferred to Christ. But what happens when you, if you still pay the bill that's been transferred to somebody else? If your debt has been transferred from AMX to Capital One, but you're still paying AMX, it doesn't matter because Capital One now holds the debt. Jesus holds your debt. You no longer have to pay for the debt. But oftentimes we try to take that debt back and now it keeps us in bondage and we can't move into what God has called us to because we're taking back the debt that has already been transferred. Amen. So we walk in unforgiveness and, and we can't forgive and then we can't walk in the forgiveness that God has given us. And the same way that the enemy works to keep us from moving past our past hurt caused by others, he uses those same measures to keep us from letting go of our own mistakes. And we keep ourselves bound because of the things that we did. And so because we messed up, we never learn how to move on from it. And so now you're 47 years old holding on to something you did when you were 20 years old. And so now you're, you're holding on to something that happened to you when you were a kid because you still blame yourself for it. And we can't walk in the forgiveness that God has given us. Amen. You've been in church your whole life and you know he died for your sins, but you, you just for whatever reason you can't walk in it. And you still walk in bondage and you still make decisions based on mistakes you made 25 and 30 years ago. You can't love again. You can't live again. You can't laugh again. You can't cry again. You can't kiss again. You can't hug again because you're still bound by what you did. And you're keeping yourself in your own prison because you can't walk in the forgiveness that God has given you. Your business failed 15 years ago, so now you can't start another business because you can't walk in the forgiveness that God has for you. And so the theme for the month has been forgiving what you can't forget. And while there have been people in my life that I couldn't get past stuff, the main person that I deal with is me. And forgiveness is me. Even though I have to give it to you and I have to receive it from God, the problem with forgiveness is you have to deal with yourself. And yourself doesn't want to forgive. Yourself wants to hold on to what has been done to you, but yourself also wants to hold on to what you have done. So oftentimes we can't get past our own thing. So as we look at Judas, it's not a lot of historical discussion about Judas. 
Um, Judas was a son of Simon Iscariot, which was mentioned back in, in John 13. And the actual first scriptural reference to Judas is his, elec is his election to the apostleship or as a disciple in Matthew 10. So if you have your Bibles, Matthew 10, one says, and when he had called him his 12 disciples, he gave them power against unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. So Judas was just like us. And I know a lot of us don't want to say, oh, I, I'm like Judas because we, we identify Judas as, you know, one of the most heinous things that anybody could have ever done. And it actually led to the capture of the Savior. But look at somebody and say, Judas is like me. Y'all don't want to say that. You're like, oh, 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 no. Because being Judas is one of the worst things you can be. You know, when you have a friend that betrays you or something like that, you be like, oh, look at that old Judas over there. Sometimes me and my friend joke, and I'd be like, Pat, you acting like a Judas, you know, like you about to die me out. But Judas walked with Jesus. Judas was a disciple. Judas saw miracles and actually had the ability to perform miracles. And although Jesus knew that he was going to betray him, he still gave Judas a chance. Now, if that don't sound like somebody, I don't know what does. And with all this access to God, Judas still messed up. And because of it, he was so full of guilt that he took his own life. And so although we come to church and although we know the word and although we speak in tongues and although we shout, we still do the same thing that Judas does. And we walk out of here holding on to the, our mistakes with the inability to forget. And we walk, we can't walk in the grace that God has given us. And we play out our mistakes in our mind over and over and over again. Look at somebody and say, I'm forgiven. No, say it loud. Say, I'm forgiven. Matthew 27 and 5 says, so Judas threw the money into the temple and left. Then he went away and hanged himself. Now, we may not physically hang ourselves, but how many of us are hanging up our dreams? How many of us are hanging up our relationships? How many of us are hanging up our marriages? How many of us are hanging up our friendships, the jobs we were supposed to have, the position in ministry that we're called to? How many of you are hanging up your future because of a mistake you made 20 years ago? How many of us can't move? Because we're holding on to the guilt of something that we did. And somebody might say, well, you know, I, I ain't never done something so heinous as, as Judas. And so we, and we still struggle. But, but, but let me give you some examples of some of the things that we do. We walked out on our last relationship. So because of it, you're scared to get in another one. We gain weight. So you won't buy or dress up, you won't wear certain clothes, you won't even go shopping because you can't forgive yourself for the weight that you've gained. You cheated in your last relationship, so you won't love again, but because you messed up, you say you don't even deserve happiness. You messed up your finances, so you won't even try to buy a house. You won't try to get it right because you don't feel like you deserve a second chance. You messed up a friendship or your business failed. You messed up with your kids, so now you try to be your kid's friend. And we won't even try to parent our kids no more because we messed up when we were a young mother or a young father 15 or 20 years ago. Now our kids are acting crazy because we don't want to be the parent because we don't feel we deserve to say anything to our kids anymore. You got in debt. <laughs> Last week, Pastor Kelly said, ooh, we. See, but, but the thing is, we, I'm not comparing Judas killing itself. But what's happening is you're keeping yourself and you're killing what God has called you to. So you won't go after it no more because you looked at porn. Who did nobody say, ooh, we right there? They're like, ooh, not me. <laughs> or you, oh, <laughs> where are our kids in here? Or you had a sexual sin. <laughs> I just say it like that for, for you know, for, you got pregnant at a young age, and you can't forgive yourself. So now you feel like you don't deserve to walk in the righteousness of God, and you're holding yourself bound because you won't walk in the forgiveness that God has given you. <laughs> and so as I began to study the message, I was like, Pastor Kevin, you got to be playing. Because one of the things and one of the issues, and I'm, I'm just open, y'all, that I have a hard time with being up here on stage. It was easy when I was, Miss Betty knew me as Zeke and, and Isaiah in high school, 
And then it was okay when I moved to college, and then I was Zay, because I didn't become Zay until I got to college, because then I was cool. And that was okay. You know, I didn't have no mantle or no standard, but then I became Minister Hunter. And it was like, Pastor Cameron, I don't want to get up there because I got some stuff from when I was Zeke and when I was Zay. And then Pastor Cameron said, okay, now I'm gonna make, you're going to be an Elder Hunter. And I'm like, Lord, no, I don't deserve to be up here because I have messed up. And what we end up doing is we end up not taking the place that we're supposed to be in because we hang up our dreams because we can't walk in the forgiveness that God has for us. And then he said, I want you to be assistant pastor, Isaiah. And I said, oh, Lord, the video from Freaknik 1995 is about to come out. Black Bike Week 1998. <laughs> I can't even tell y'all all this stuff I was doing. But what we do is we hold ourselves in bondage and bound because of the mistakes that we've made. And God is trying to call us and say, walk in the forgiveness that I've given you. And Judas never got there. So I'm not here, I'm not here to theologically discuss whether Judas was ever forgiven. But I'm here to say you can't hang up your future because of your past mistakes. <laughs> oh, y'all. And let me tell you, I didn't, it didn't hit me. I've known what I was supposed to talk about the whole time ever since I found out. And I was praying, God, help somebody else hear the same word. Because I have a hard time walking in it. Because, y'all, once you get up here, your whole life gets illuminated. And everything you do gets illuminated. And stuff I did 25 years ago, people started bringing up, well, you remember when you had a problem with this? And you remember? And it wasn't until I got up, when I was down here, and I, I didn't, it didn't matter, but when I got right here, everything that I did started coming up. The devil is a lie. And what happens, y'all, is we've got to figure out how to let go of our past. So we can get to the future that God has for us. And I'm trying to get you to see it because it was so on me. I'm telling Pastor, Pastor Campbell, no. And he was like, Zay, you're going to be a minister. I'm like, man, I don't need all that. I'm good. I'm already working in ministry. I don't need, I don't need no title. You know how you do. I don't need no title. I'm good. It's just work. And then when he asked, he says, Zay, you, you know, you're going to be my assistant pastor. And, you know, I want you to pray about it. I'm like, I ain't got to pray about this. It's just certain stuff I ain't got to pray about. This ain't God. This is, you know, this ain't it. He's like, Zay, I'm going to give you some time to pray now. Now you go, you go pray. And then this is what, <laughs> y'all, this is what Pastor, hey, Pastor Campbell said. Look, I'm going to give you some time to pray. But if he say anything other than yes, you miss God. And I'm like, no pressure. <laughs> but sometimes people can see your future before you can, and I'm caught up on what doesn't he know or what don't you know about what I did 17 years ago that I can't even walk in what God has called me to. For a long time, I didn't want to do the announcements. I didn't want to do praise and worship. I felt like, you know, I wasn't good enough because my past wouldn't allow me to be. The stuff that I did was so heinous that you wouldn't even receive it from me if you knew who I was. Back, I ain't always been the guy that lived in the suburbs that had, you know, had centipede grass. I was the guy that didn't have no weed in them. We had to cut the weeds around our house with some scissors. How can you receive from that guy? So you feel like you're not even qualified to stand up in front of people because of what you dealt with in your past. <laughs> and that's what the enemy will do. He will stop you at a certain point because he doesn't want you to get to the next place. About six to eight months ago, Mike was singing some songs, but now he's leading praise and worship. And Mike would be like, well, I don't, you know, I don't, that song ain't in my range. Now he's singing everything. I'd be like, Mike, we're not singing that song. That song ain't in your range, and we're not going to sing it. But, but Mike was letting his past keep him from moving to his future. And that's what we do. We fail to walk in the forgiveness, and we fail to walk in the grace of God. It's greatness in this room right now, and God has called you to do something, but you got to be willing to let the guilt of your past go. And today I'm going to show you. And, it, and don't get me wrong, yes, and Pastor Campbell has mentioned it, they're, they're Christian therapists, and they're people that sometimes you need to help you unpack what happened in your past. But 
today I'm going to give you a formula for how to let that thing go. Look at somebody and say, let it go. And I'm not talking about the stuff you didn't know you did. I'm talking about the stuff that you know you did wrong and the stuff that you know you messed up. But it's easy for me to forgive you because I don't have to deal with you in the mirror every day. I don't have to make my mistakes based on decisions that you've made or poorly made in the past. I don't have to make uh, decisions based on what you allowed to happen when you were a kid. So I've got to get to a place where I'm letting my past be in my past. And I know it ain't, ain't scriptural, but they say hakuna matata. It means no worries. It's a problem. For, um, that was the book of uh, Lion King. T Timon and Puma said, Leave your past behind you. <laughs> As I press toward the mark for the... No, I'm sorry. All right, let's come on. Come on back. But the thing is, the longer you hold on to the guilt of your past, the more it hurts. And two weeks ago, Pastor Campbell said, time doesn't heal. Three weeks ago, he said, time doesn't heal all wounds. What it does is it makes you cold. And it makes you comfortable. So you're cool. You're okay with being cold. You're okay with not pursuing. Because you're okay with, you know, I messed up. I said, I'm sorry, but let me not pursue any more because I'm good right here. Because if I do any more, then I got to put myself out there. And then I know people that know my past. So now I got to deal with the people that know my past. And Judas couldn't deal with it. And it wasn't just because of the disciples, and I'm not here to get into his mindset. But Judas walked out of there, and he couldn't deal with the guilt of what he had done. And I know you didn't like to say, I'm Judas. But so many of us won't pursue what God has called us to because we can't get over the guilt of what we've done. So do me, do me a favor, and I want you to write this down. I want you to ask yourself this question. What have you given up on because you haven't been able to walk in forgiveness? Is it, is it marriage? Is it friendship? Is it parenting? Have you given up on your health because you can't forgive yourself? What have you given up on because you haven't been able to walk in forgiveness. See, you've held on to this, this for so long, and you've held on to the responsibility of the mistakes that you've let your past catch up with you, and no longer is it your past, it's your present. Because you can't leave it behind you. If you're tagging along with you, it ain't even your past. You still got it. So you, you bring in your past into your present, and you'll never get to your future while you're holding on to your past. Look at somebody and say, let it go. Oh, Jesus. It took me a long time to get to where I'm at and understand what God is calling me to. And the problem with not letting stuff go um, is you won't even pray because you don't feel like you deserve for God to hear your prayer. You won't even wish and hope and dream because you don't believe God, God believes you or you deserve, you deserve the forgiveness. You won't love. You won't praise you won't worship because you feel like you're not even qualified to lift your hands. Amen? So I don't know exactly why Judas betrayed him, but because of the betrayal, Judas couldn't let go of the guilt. So you've been involved in ministry, and he's given you all of these remarkable spiritual gifts. But the one you can't do is walk in the grace that he's already given you. Amen? Pastor Campbell said we don't earn forgiveness. You're given forgiveness. Grace. You don't get to earn it. It's, it's a gift. It's something that you have been given. You don't get to earn. You earn trust, but you don't earn forgiveness. Jesus died for your sins. It wasn't the fact that, that he owed you anything. So that debt transfer wasn't because you deserved it. And that's one thing you've got to get in mind. You don't deserve it. You're right. You don't. You don't deserve it. It says in 2 Corinthians 5 and 21, it says, God made him who had no sin to be sin for us so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. You don't deserve forgiveness, but you've been given forgiveness. How do you feel when you give somebody a gift and they don't accept it? You remember the last time you gave your kid something for Christmas or for their birthday, or you spent a lot of money on a graduation gift, and they started talking about the next gift? God has given you forgiveness, the gift of forgiveness. How do you think it looks to your father that he let his son come down and die for your sin, but you can't accept what he's given you? <laughs> My kids, we cook every now and then. 
And we got this, all this food. We have chicken and collard green and rice, and we have bread, and they want McDonald's. God has given you soul food Sunday, and you want McDonald's. Now, you'll accept the speaking in tongues, and you'll accept the shouting, and you'll accept the ability to be able to speak, but you won't accept the gift that he's given you, which is the greatest gift of forgiveness. Look at somebody and say, I've been forgiven. So how do I walk in it? I said I had to say all that to set it up. And if Lex was here, Lex would be like, man, if you don't get that message on the road. But how do I walk? How do I begin to walk in forgiveness when I'm dealing? And the thing is, every time you look in the mirror, you see the things that you didn't do right. Sometimes I look in the mirror and I see the bags under my eyes and I realize I didn't get enough sleep. Or sometimes I look in my eyes are red and I'm like, God, I didn't do. And then sometimes I look at the scale and I'm like, you really didn't do some stuff. But how do I walk in forgiveness for my own mistakes? So Matthew 27 and 3 says, when Judas, who had betrayed him, saw that Jesus was condemned, he seized with remorse and returned the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priests and to the elders. The first step in walking in forgiveness is overcoming guilt. I don't want to downplay it and make it seem like overcoming guilt is easy. It is not. But the first step or the first day in walking in the forgiveness that God has given you is overcoming guilt. It's overcoming guilt. So what is guilt? Guilt is a gnawing distress arising from a sense of guilt from past wrongs. It is a deep regret coming from a sense of guilt for things that you have done previously. We all feel guilt. All of us feel guilt, and we feel guilt in different ways because guilt is a result of the original sin. When Adam and Eve disobeyed God in the Garden of Eden, sin and guilt entered the world. Genesis 3 and 7 says, when the woman saw that the fruit of the tree was, was, good, was for good for food and pleasing to the eye and also desirable for gaining wisdom, she took some and ate it. She also gave some to her husband, so, when, when, so who was with her? He ate it. Then the eyes of both of them were open, and they realized that they were naked. So they sewed fig leaves together and made coverings for themselves. Then the man and his wife heard the sound of the Lord God. And as he was walking through the garden in the cool of the day, they hid themselves from the Lord. The first sign of guilt that we see started in the book of Genesis. So it's natural to feel guilty, but we can't stay in our guilt. Look at somebody and say, overcome the guilt. And what does guilt look like? Guilt includes anxiety. It includes stress, sometimes sadness, and feelings of worthlessness, low self-esteem, regret, loneliness, and critical self-talk. Stop talking negative to yourself. Stop telling yourself what you can't do. It's keeping you stuck in the guilt of what you did. I ain't nobody. I ain't never going to be nobody. I failed. I can't, I can't succeed. And the thing is, Pastor Campbell has been teaching that failure is good. But what happens when I can't get over my own failure? I know it's good because he said it. But what happens when I can't get over? I can get over your failure. And you messed up. And you messed up but I can't get over what it feels like for me to mess up. So what the enemy does is he attacks you with guilt. So the number one step in walking in your forgiveness is you've got to overcome the guilt. And sometimes you may be aware that you feel guilty, while other times you might not even recognize that guilt is the thing that's keeping you where you are, and you can't stay here. Romans 3.23, NIV says, For all have sinned and fell short, of the glory of God, and all are justified freely by his grace through the redemption that came by Jesus Christ. You do not deserve forgiveness, but you've been given it by the grace of God. Look at somebody and say, by his grace. So today we're walking in forgiveness. Matthew 27 and 4 says, when Judas, who had betrayed him, saw that Jesus was condemned. He seized with remorse, and he returned the 30 pieces of silver. And four says, I have sinned 
for I have betrayed innocent blood. What is that to us? They replied, that's your responsibility. The second stage or the second step in, in walking in forgiveness is take responsibility. Take responsibility. Doesn't mean that you don't know what you did. It does, you know, walking in forgiveness doesn't mean that you, you're not acknowledging that you messed up. You take responsibility for what you did. It's acknowledging the situation. It's recognizing the problem or mistake or issue at hand. And it's being honest with yourself about what happened and how it affected others. Sometimes we can't move forward because of what we have done to others. And so it won't allow us to accept his forgiveness because we're so worried about their forgiveness. And when you stay in the guilt and not take responsibility, you stop looking for forgiveness from God and you start looking for forgiveness through, through people. And so we're waiting for affirmation that we are actually forgiven. So look at somebody and say, take responsibility. <laughs> We start looking for these positive affirmations. So now I can go up on stage because Pastor Campbell said that I'm qualified to go on stage, but I'm still sometimes not walking in God's forgiveness. I'm taking his opinion and I'm using it as my justification to be up here. <laughs> oh, so y'all, we've got to be able to take response. Man, there's some things. That I did in, 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 in 1990, I'll say about 98 to 2002, just so y'all won't involve during that time frame, <laughs> that, that I look back and I'm like, God, I'm not qualified. I'm not justified to be up here to speak. But guess what makes me qualified to be up here to speak? To 1998 to 2002. I can tell you how to be a college student struggling and, and having a hangover, but still going to church. I can tell you how it is to, well, I can't tell you that part. I'll keep that to myself. Because he forgave me. Y'all ain't got to forgive me. Ain't, ain't no need to open up all the, all the doors. You know, I keep some stuff to myself. Anyway, we'll just keep moving on that one. Whew. Almost messed up. I, I almost told you. You got me. You almost got me. But you got to learn and grow. You got to learn and grow. And that's what taking responsibility is. It's learning and growing. It is <laughs> identifying and developing new skills or habits that will help you avoid making the same mistakes. Seek out resources, education, guidance, wisdom to help you grow and improve. It's not staying there. What happens is we make mistakes, but we don't learn from them. We don't learn from our mistakes. We make bad business decisions. You don't turn around and go make the same bad business decision. So what you do is you learn and grow. I won't go back and do some of the stuff I did in 2002. I won't go back and do some of the stuff I did yesterday because I'm learning and I'm growing. And so in one case, I have taken responsibility and then I've also overcome my guilt because I recognize I've been forgiven. Ain't no, the, the longer I stay guilty doesn't make me any more justified. The longer I stay in this place doesn't make me any more qualified to be up here. And I'm not saying it's easy to get over guilt. Some of us have some things that are, that are very difficult to, to get over. Now, side note, you got to be mindful of the people that are around you when you're dealing with your issues. Amen. It says in three, he says, it says he was seized with remorse. And then if you go down to four, it says, I have sinned, he said, for I betrayed innocent blood. They said, these are the same people that just gave him the money for, for betraying Jesus and, and turning it over. He's they're about to seize him. And he said, well, what is that to us? It says, they reply, that's your response. Be mindful of the people that you have around you when you're dealing with your issues. Sometimes you'll be around people that you think are your closest friends, and you're like, look, I'm having this problem. They're looking like, hey, look, I don't know why you got that problem. That ain't my business. That's your, that's your business. Be mindful of who you're dealing with, and make sure you're receiving godly advice with whatever it is that you're dealing with. And that's why Pastor Campbell has recommended Christian counseling, because it always comes back to the Word. If your friends are giving you 
counseling and advice that is outside of the word, you need to find you some old friends. Now, let's be real. All of us got that one friend that's ready to go. Everybody got that one friend that's ready to ride on somebody and knock if you bug. You know, and if you don't, then you might be that friend. <laughs> if I'm calling you to fight and you always talking me off the ledge, maybe I'm the one that's always ready to fight. But you got to have people around you that are going to give you godly advice and wisdom so that you can overcome the guilt and take responsibility for what you've done. If you're in a marriage and you're talking to somebody about your marriage and your friends never tell you sometimes it's your fault, then you're talking to the wrong people. So You got to be mindful of who you're hanging around. So Judas threw the money in the temple. Then he went and hanged himself. And so often we get here. We take the responsibility and we deal with the guilt, but we stop. So now you're stuck with your guilt. You understand what you did, but you never move forward. We take responsibility. We deal with the guilt. And we sit in it. We sit in it. And we sit in it, and now we can't do what God has truly called you to do because you've hung up all of the things that he's called. So lastly, Philippians 3, 13 and 14, it said, Brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it. But one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead, I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. So my last point is to restart. My last point is to restart. You've gotten to a place where you've stopped. Now it's time to restart. And somebody might say, well, last message you talked about, you said rebuild. The reason I like the, the prefix re, it, it means to do it again. And in your Christian walk, it's all about doing it Again, repentance is doing it again. And repentance and forgiveness are synonymous because they're things that you will have to continue to do over and over again. Repent to, to turn around. You will have to restart over and over and over Again, and you have to ask for forgiveness, and you have to walk in forgiveness, and you have to ask for forgiveness, and you have to walk in forgiveness, but you can't stop walking back here. You've got to start walking again, and you've got to be willing to restart. Look at somebody and say, restart. Michaela, that means restart playing that guitar. Whatever that thing is that God called you to, it's time for you to restart. It means you can't, it's the, the, it doesn't mean that you forget it. The, the word actually says, the word, the Hebrew word for forget is shaka or nasha. And, and what it means is it means to ignore, to neglect, forsake, or to act in disregard. The International Standard Bible Encyclopedia says it's to fail to hold in mind. So it means that the thought is still there. You don't actually forget it, but it means you disregard it to continue to restart. You won't forget what you did, but you have to let it not make your future decisions for you. And that's how we begin to walk in forgiveness. 1 John 1 and 9 says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us of our sins. Y'all, and I'm almost done. Forgive us of our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. This scripture reassures us that if we take responsibility for our mistakes and confess them to God, he will forgive us and purify us of all our wrongdoing. The thing is, we have got to be willing to walk in his forgiveness. This is probably the hardest stage. This is probably the most difficult stage because it means you have to intentionally take action. You have got to do something. And after today, I'm asking you to walk in God's forgiveness 
We have already forgiven, but now I'm asking you to walk in the forgiveness. I'm asking you to start over. I'm asking you to pray again. I'm asking you to love again. I'm asking you to try again. I'm asking you to believe again. I'm asking you to hope again. I'm asking you to work out again. I'm asking you to walk out here today with what you wrote down that you've been putting aside and you've hung up because I'm not walking in forgiveness, and I'm asking you to do it again. If you would, stand, please.